All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Hyperler, and today we're going to be talking about episode two for Suicide Squad, which just released. Now, with this update, there definitely came a lot of quality of life updates that I found very enjoyable. But on the other side of that, there wasn't really a lot of new content for people. So if you're looking for my final opinion on this before I dive into the specifics of what I liked and what I didn't like, here's the quick and easy answer. If you're looking at this update and you're thinking of coming back, if you like what Suicide Squad offers you in episode one without the Joker tied to it, yeah, probably try the update. But if you didn't like what Suicide Squad offered you in episode one and you don't like that there's no new character or no new story content, I probably wouldn't come back for this because there is only the new grind available with some quality of life updates, right? Now, that isn't to say the quality of life updates are bad. I actually think a lot of them are good. For example... At the start of episode one, you had to grind 30 levels in order to do the Brainiac boss fight. In episode two, you only have to grind 10 levels. And I did a mission 10 times. And once I did that, I was able to play it. I think that's a great change on their part. Now, when we get to that actual boss fight, though, this is where it all kind of falls apart. Because for anyone who's played these boss fights, they have been pretty disappointing. They haven't been great. And this one kind of follows that trend where you're playing it and you just don't enjoy yourself playing it, right? And I think, unfortunately, it just seems like that's a systemic thing. And I feel like that won't change when it comes to boss fights in Suicide Squad. I think this is just going to be something that they're always going to have. You know, obviously, if you've seen the leaks, you know that next season is going to be Flash and Superman together. Because it seems like now they're having to put these, you know, two Brainiacs together in order to kind of speed up things. But even then, I'm looking at it going, is that really going to make it more fun? Is that going to make it more annoying, right? But to their credit as well, in that boss fight, if you guys remember, it used to be very hard to kill Brainiac because he had so much health and we did very little damage to him. I can say that at least in this boss fight today, we did a lot more damage to him and it didn't take me forever to kill him, right? So it's kind of a mixed bag there. But I definitely will say that at least without running it, more times for the corrupted loot which i would argue is a positive i just don't know how to take it right now other than disappointing in terms of the new mission i want to talk about the new watchtower mission as well because this mission is not good i just don't find this mission enjoyable whatsoever this mission is a hack mission with a new twist on it and frankly I just don't see the appeal of doing this mission over and over again. It definitely doesn't add anything new to the kind of repertoire of what they have in the game already. It just takes what we have already and adds a small little twist to it. And it does feel like at the end there with the brood, it's more annoying than challenging and more annoying than fun. Frankly, I don't know if this mission is really worthwhile to play at this point. I don't think this mission is worth the time nor the effort. And I think more often than not, you're probably better off doing other missions in the game in order to kind of enjoy what you have out of your experience. I just don't see why Rocksteady added this mission whatsoever. It just doesn't add anything to the kind of, you know, experience of the game and i just played it once i forgot about it and i just don't think it's worthwhile whatsoever i just want to touch on that because obviously a lot of people are going to be looking for an opinion on the new mission and it basically is a hack mission with a new twist of shifting between dimensions in order to do damage to the enemy the idea is cool the execution not so much right if we have to do stuff between dimensions in order to kind of damage enemies or do different objectives i think there's a really solid premise there i really think there is an idea there that they can get behind i would really like to see that mechanic used in other missions even including like if they were to ever do like a dungeon or a raid if that's something that would ever be on the table i think shifting between dimensions in order to do like different kinds of objectives could be really cool in like a raid encounter for example just taking that and moving it onto a hack mission doesn't really add anything there. It just feels more annoying than whatever. But to Rock City's credit, the idea is there. The execution was not. Speaking of loot, this is going to be a mixed bag as well. Because the new loot with Punish seems really good, right? I really like Punish. I really like the mechanic of it. And it seems like with the right combination of gear, you're going to be doing a lot of damage to it. So that seems good. The other side of the loot argument is the difficulty system because they introduced two new difficulties here. But some of the loot is actually tied behind the new difficulty system. And to even further that point, it seems like the XP that you earned isn't being fully given to the XP you needed to unlock these new difficulty systems. From my understanding, from what I've heard from other people who've been playing, 
the XP you earn is different because it takes a fraction of that and puts it towards unlocking the new difficulties. So you're not even getting your full XP gains there, which means it's going to take you a lot longer to unlock these new difficulties, which means it's going to take you a lot longer to unlock the new weapons and new gear. And I don't think that's a great choice there, right? Because once again, it's not clear, right? I didn't know this until it was pointed out to me. People actually had to do the math for that. But then two, you're also creating this artificial grind, which just feels gross, right? And I don't think that's really cool either. So I don't know if that's intended behavior or not. If it is, that really does suck on the part of Rock City. And I really don't think that should be the way it is. If it's a glitch, I would hope they fix it soon. Otherwise, people are going to just be continuously grinding for these new difficulty levels and they may not have to. But I would really like some clarification on that. Moving towards Battle Pass now, the Battle Pass was actually a big point of contention in Episode 1 because it just felt like it took forever in order to kind of level up your Battle Pass here. In Episode 2, they actually increased every single way that you can earn Battle Pass points. And because of that, it actually feels good now playing and leveling your Battle Pass. I think I actually leveled more in 4 hours than I did in like 16 hours in Episode 1. It just feels like now you're being rewarded for actually playing the game. And I think that's a good thing. All in all, what I look at episode two as is almost like relaying a foundation for season two, unfortunately, right? It feels like this game has to backtrack in order to go forward. But in order to backtrack, you're not really getting a lot of the meat and the potatoes that you would like, right? We're still missing good story content. We're obviously still missing QVK, right? Like, where's QVK? Are they going to talk about QVK? We don't know. But if you're looking at episode two and you kind of already like suicide squad you kind of already like what you've been given and you're looking forward to just more suicide squad you get it you definitely get it you get that new enemy you get that new mission which once again i don't really like but you still get it and you get new incursions that are just reskins of old missions but they're basically using them for incursions now yeah i mean like it is what it is you know i do like it I found that my mastery level was going up a lot higher too. Like they definitely sped up a lot of things here in order to make you enjoy the game more. So I'm not going to kind of write this game off right now because of this update. I think this update in the grand scheme of things will hopefully solidify season two, episode one there as a more substantial update because of all the changes they had to make with this one. Hopefully what we will see is that these kind of changes are more reflection of their willingness to kind of listen to the community and make these changes in the direction of player enjoyment and, and player engagement right what we were talking about in stream today is that when you play these games if you feel good you want to play more right so that's more loot that's unlocking your battle pass a lot quicker the things that make you feel good make you want to play the game and hopefully rocksteady kind of leans into that more instead of kind of squeezing you for every second of your day Unfortunately, obviously with the new difficulty levels, it seems like they haven't wholly got that message yet, but moving forward, hopefully that's something they'll reflect on and be like, okay, let's try to make this more fun. At this point in time, I will stand by the point that I don't think Suicide Squad is going to turn it around, but I think to that point though, you take whatever player base you have and you kind of cater them a little bit. You kind of treat them a lot better. You kind of give them things that'll make their enjoyment of the game a lot higher, right? And I think that's kind of what you have to do here. I look at, you know, kind of increasing the battle pass and so on and so forth as kind of them saying, hey, we know that there's only a certain amount of you guys left. Let's kind of give you guys the things that you want in order to kind of make sure that you guys have fun with this game for however long left you have it for, whether that's three months, six months, a year. Who knows at this point, right? I don't know. Many of us don't know. It is what it is. One of the things I will say, though, about this update is that for a live service game, the skin offerings aren't great. I've seen this talked about on Twitter ever since the update went live yesterday of the new skins in the shop. And these things just aren't good, man. I'm sorry. But like, I know that this is such a nitpick thing. This is going to be something people are going to have a lot of issues with. Like, I do like to spend money on the video games I play, right? Like, I do like to give back. But I look at this shop in Suicide Squad, and I don't think there's been one thing that I've wanted to spend my money on. It just doesn't seem like it's calling out to us to be like, hey, spend money on us. We're putting out good stuff, right? And I have said on Twitter that it feels like Multiverses is going to get movie skins before Suicide Squad. And I kind of stand by that because I look at what Suicide Squad is putting out and I look at what Multiverse is putting out. They just put out the Uber Jason skin as a preview before the game even launches. And I'm like, 
yeah, Multiverses is probably going to have some sort of movie skin for Harley Quinn before Suicide Squad is. And I just find that mind blowing. And I just wish that Suicide Squad and Rocksteady were able to put it together for at least that and give us the kind of skins that we want so we can actually enjoy the game, you know? And maybe it's a small nitpick on the list of things that we should be nitpicking this game for. But to me, it's crazy that we have a live service game that doesn't want your money. And I don't know why that is. I'm not saying they can't put out original skins and things that they want to do, but they definitely have to start putting out some hitter skins here for people to spend money on the game. I just don't see why they're not doing that. It's like they're leaving money on the table at that point. Regardless, how do I feel as a whole about this update? This update will not move the needle for anybody who doesn't want the needle to be moved for them. If you like Suicide Squad and you like kind of what it offers you, play it. Have fun with it. Go chase some new gear. If not, wait for Season 2 and wait for the new character, the new expansion to Metropolis, the new changes there, hopefully QVK. There will be more offered in that one than there was in this one. Regardless, I do enjoy this update. I think this update was a lot of fun, and I will continue to play it and cover it and make content on it. With that being said, if you want more Suicide Squad content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a nice little comment. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time here. Enjoy the rest of your day and the night. Take care to care yourselves. Later, guys.